Nag-toxic ang isang patient. Everything for your patients. Like everything. <laughs> Yuck na lang. Every guazon. I get really, really nervous. Malalang palpitation. After every duty, you are so, so tired. Sobrang nakakapagod kasi ang daming, daming patients. You receive food from friends or from specialty. Specialty! <laughs> My worst duty experience was... Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Sierales. For those of you here, I'm an MD patient candidate from the Philippines and I vlog about medicine, medical school, life of medical student, life outside the hospital, and research. And if you're interested in those types of content, then you may want to subscribe to my channel. For this video, I'll be sharing my experience as an internal medicine intern. And it will be divided into three parts. So the first one is, what is the pre-duty post cycle of an internal medicine rotator? The second one is, what are the roles of a clerk or intern rotating in internal medicine? And third would be my personal experiences. Personally, internal medicine, or we call it IM, was one of the most difficult rotations during internship. Yet it was also one of the most, or maybe the most fulfilling rotation during clerkship or internship. That's where I felt like I was very smart, the smartest version of myself. <laughs> Maybe the reason why IM was very difficult, maybe because of there are four wards with IM patients and there are also ectopics, we call them ectopics. IM primary patients from other wards. There are other IM patients at the other side of the hospital. They are everywhere. IM patients are everywhere. <laughs> but fulfilling, maybe because we really get to manage patients like a real doctor. IM really made me smart during that time, but now brain rot era. <laughs> We had a total of 8 weeks in internal medicine. I previously shared about our internship was divided into two phases. We rotate twice in each department. So in internal medicine, we rotated 4 weeks during phase 1 and another 4 weeks during phase 2. This was to make it COVID proof so that if you miss phase 1 due to COVID, then you can make up for it during phase 2. In those 4 weeks, we had war duty during the first 3 weeks and ER duty on the last week. Part 1, what was our duty cycle during phase 1 ward weeks? Um, we had a pre-duty post cycle. So there will be three blocks rotating at a time. So there will be a pre-duty block, a duty block, and a post-duty block each day as we cycle through the pre-duty post cycle. A different duty team was reintroduced during phase 2 which I will be sharing in a separate video. Pre-duty was an AM ward duty from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or onwards because we have a WAPO rounds. During the WAPO rounds, we just endorse our patients to the PM duty team. During the duty day, it's an outpatient or OPD during the AM. So we see patients, we take their history and PE, we formulate a diagnosis and treatment plan. Then during the PM, from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next day, we go on PM ward duty. Then after that, we have a guazon rounds from 7.30 to 9. We are able to go home at 9 or onwards. So guazon is like an m, m conference or mortality and morbidity in which we review the events surrounding the mort or morb patients during the PM shift. Then lastly, the post-duty. It's ideally a true off. So after the 9 a.m. guazon, you can rest from 9 a.m. to 7 a.m. the next day before you go on pre-duty again and the cycle begins again <laughs> it's ideally a true off because during the pre-duty post cycle we can have like consultant rounds senior rounds minsan surprise <laughs> na your post-duty possibly meron kang rounds so team knows me during rounds, we get to see patients, review their cases, discuss about your articles, and discuss the next steps of the patient's management. So we really get to learn a lot from these rounds. Part 2. What are the duty roles in IM? During each pre-duty or duty, there will be three people with major roles. These are the Joapod, the Census Kid, and the RIV Runner. And other interns or clerks will be jualalais from the root root word from the root word alalais or in English servant servant yeah the joapod or the junior ward admitting physician on duty is the team leader who takes referrals manage referrals call the shots he is the most important person during the pre duty or duty he is also going to be the person who will present during the guazon rounds for the events surrounding the demise of. Nahakaka ba maging juapod? I mean, personally, kaya ko maging juapod, but if I had to present during the MM 
the Guazan rounds and then <laughs> yuck na lang. <laughs> Being a Joapod is so fun because you get to manage the team. You call the shots. As in, ang saya maging Joapod, just not the Guazan part. We also have the Census Kid or the CK who takes the history and physical examination of newly admitted patients. So they are on their toes waiting for new admissions. They also update the census of each ward or the ward patients so everyone will be monitored accordingly. And they also assign who will monitor for a specific ward during a specific time. CKs are also really important. Third, we have the RIV runner. This person will run or request blood products for the patients from all services. There is a basket like this full of blood request forms. Then everyone who don't have any major roles are called dualalis or like alalis or servant of the major roles people and the patients. We cycle among these roles so we get to experience all the roles at some point. So we get to become a Joapod, a CK, an RIV runner. As interns or clerks, you are assigned patients in which you attend to, monitor, do procedures, do extractions, conduct radiology for their imaging or to hemodialysis or wherever. You also get to manage when there are events and basically everything for your patients. Like everything their ij cath needs their all their needs <laughs> like labs extractions fecal whatever sputum collection everything we also get to manage simple events like difficulty of breathing hypotension hypertension and fever among others and when there's a code blue we just call it code in our institution we call the nurses and immediately do chest compressions by ourselves until help arrives or if help arrives <laughs> I am is already daunting baseline, but for part 3, my personal experiences during my I am rotation. During phase 1, our block spent New Year's Eve and New Year at the I am ward. I have a vlog for that which you can see here, or I'll place the link at the description box below. It was the first time I spent the holidays in the hospital. During my first job on ship, it was an AM duty. I really prepared for it because it's very, very scary when it's your first time. And a day before, I already accessed all the charts of all IM patients, read the common cases, and study the management of the common chief complaints. Literally anything can happen, so that's the reason why I was so nervous and I needed to prepare intensely. On my Joapod ship day, everything went smoothly. I was able to manage all referrals with the help, of course, of my blockmates and clerks. Shout out to Block G, best block. However, a few minutes before the end of my shift, nagtoxic ang isang patient. One patient became unstable, and at the end of my sh they had a decrease in sensorium and almost got intubated during the last few minutes of my shift. At the end of my Joapod ship, I got a score of 0, zero or 0 mortality and 0 morbidity. And naita with natin. For my second drop on ship, it was a PM duty, which means I have guas on the next day to present the mortality and morbidities if ever there are. And unfortunately, I had two mortalities and one morbidity. In my defense, the mortalities were already unstable. Very, very unstable when I received them, so it was only just a matter of time. Bless their souls. Every guazon, I get really, really nervous. Like, malalang palpitations. Like, every day, you just pray that nothing happens to your patient because if something happens to your patient, if they become a morb or a mort, most definitely you will be called to present or to fully endorse the patient in front of your co interns, residents, and sometimes there are consultants so uh, <laughs> for my guazon i was able to take note of all of the events surrounding the demise or the mortality and also the morbidity and i was able to answer the questions of the seniors so what a relief as a uh, sanay mag document ng mga stuff <laughs> like i have a vlog a detailed journal once in a while here is a photo during that day Also, I was the first Joapo to have the Guazon at the new Guazon Hall because it has been under renovation for I think more than a year already. So during our Joapo ship, we have this Joa food tradition. So it's a word play for Joapo and food. So the Joapo provides food for everyone on duty, including the co-interns and the clerks. It's not required though, but 
we wanted to do the tradition because it's part of the I am experience. So it really depends on you. The usual food are chicken, fried chicken, chicken wings, uh, pizza, coffee. But some rich interns have buffet. <laughs> Sana on. For our oral exam, it happens during the ER or fourth week. Our block was the first block to have the oral exam for our internship batch. Unfortunately, but also fortunately. Unfortunately in the sense that I was one of the first four interns who will have our oral exam for our internship batch. Fortunately, because let's get it over with, right? Because for me, once you're done with IM oral exam, it's like you're done with internship. Parang siya yung kailangan mo lang malagpasan tapos masasabi mo na okay na, tapos na ako. What happened was that I only got to study starting a week before because after every duty, you are so so tired that you don't have the energy to study anymore and most of the time, you spend your free time sleeping or resting or go out to have that work-life balance that we all want to achieve. There was a full page of possible topics that we will possibly get during the oral exam and, and only got to study around four or five topics which were asthma, heart failure, coronary artery disease, hyperthyroidism, and the last one I only studied the night before. So my batchmate, shout out to Leslie for giving me a crash course on CKD or chronic kidney disease which was fortunately the case I got for the oral exam. Like I was so so lucky to be able to study it the night before or just a few hours before. What happens in the day of the oral exam is that we are given, I think that was 10 minutes to read the case and prepare our differentials, diagnosis, the diagnostics or labs that we would like to request, and the treatment plan. Uh, after that station, we present it to a consultant for about 10 minutes where they will ask us uh, theoreticals and all the questions that they can think of. This was us before the oral exam. This was us when the oral exam was going. And when the oral exam was done. My worst duty experience was during the first day due to shifting dullness for the non-med people out there shifting dullness is when you shift in or you just started rotating in a specific department and you don't know the system how they work what you will do as a rotator it's very difficult because you need to adjust to a lot of things Another bad duty experience is the whole ER week. As in, sobrang nakakapagod kasi ang daming, daming patients and there are only like three to four interns and a few clerks. As in, sobrang nakakapagod siya. Because there are so many to do, so many extractions, conductions, so many. <gasps> and in the extractions, the worst is cup rounds, you call it cup rounds, where you follow up regarding if patients already got their sputum samples, fecal samples, urine samples, all kinds of samples in a cup. And also uh, extractions where you need to submerge the sample in ice. Because it's difficult to find ice at the ER. <laughs> There's so limited freezers where there are ice. But what made ER bearable was my duty mates here. Because they're fun to be with during duties and I really appreciate them. Thank you. On the other hand, my best IM duty experience is every day <laughs> no because it's really fun when you're with your blockmates well i like my blockmates i love them i always look forward to our pre-duty and duty because we are together in the call room we get to interact get to have fun while well, on duty or pre-duty so yeah no char another one would be my first drop wood ship where my score was zero zero so zero mortality and zero morbidity we got all our patients through Again, thank you to my blockmates and the clerks and to my seniors for the guidance. Another best part would be when you receive food from friends or from special people. Special people! <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone who sent food. You know who you are. Thank you. One of my love languages talaga yung food. <laughs> And I think in general then with med people, when you send them food, they will really appreciate it, like genuinely appreciate it. 
So, 10 food lang. <laughs> Keep them coming. Diba? The best way to a person's heart is through their stomach. <laughs> I think that's it for now. My next upload will be my phase 2 internal medicine rotation or maybe a different one. You may want to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when I release a new vlog. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.